بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویورز دس از دا سیونتھ ایپیسوڈ آف دا سیونتین ٹاپک اینڈ ایز یو نو وی ہیو بین انالائزنگ دی فیمس ٹیریٹری وچ سیز دیٹ دا قرآن واز ریویل آن سیون آحروف ان دا لاسٹ ایپیسوڈ وی ہیڈ فنشڈ کرٹیکلی ایویلویٹنگ دا ٹیکسٹ آف دا نیریٹوز اینڈ واٹ وی ہیڈ ڈن واز دیٹ وی ہیڈ کرٹیکلی کاسٹ لک ایٹ دی سیون میجر انٹرپریٹیشنس آف دس نیریٹو اینڈ وی ہیڈ فاؤنڈ دیٹ نن آف دیم از کنوینسنگ And from today onwards, we'll start studying the chains of narration of this uh, narrative. And this narrative has been reported in a number of ways by many Sahaba. Uh, we have ex- at least 16 Sahaba reporting this uh, narrative, which, which I have uh, been able to gather, although the claim is that there are more than 16. And then we have uh, seven uh, narratives which have been reported by the Sahaba themselves. This, the, the 16 are the Marfu narratives. And this, then we have seven uh, Mokuf narratives uh, from the Sahaba. And then we have nine Maktu narratives, which means narratives which have been narrated by the Tabi'un. And finally, we will analyze four other narratives or four other categories of narratives in which uh, we've, we, have, we will see that uh, certain narratives have been reported which explain the meaning of these seven Ahruf narratives. Now, as you can see on your uh, screen, the, the, the Sahaba who report the Marfu narratives, uh, they narrate this, these narratives from the pro- Prophet directly are being displayed. Uh, you can see there are 16 and as you go along we find Umru al Khattab and his narrative has been reported by eight of his students uh, which you can see uh, as you can uh, browse down his name. Uh, then the second has been reported by Usman ibn Affan and then we have the third uh, reported by Ubayy ibn Qa'b and from Ubayy again we have seven uh, of his students uh, reporting this narrative and from his own students we have some other variants as well. In the fourth place uh, you can see is Abdullah ibn Masood and uh, we uh, once again find that there are seven of his students reporting this narrative from him. Uh, in the fifth place we have Abu Huraira radiya ta'ala anhu Then in the sixth place we have Huzaifa ibn al-Yaman, the seventh is Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, Anas ibn Malik is the eighth person, ninth is Abdullah ibn Abbas, tenth is Amr ibn al-As, eleven uh, uh, is Umme Ayyub, twelfth uh, is Samara ibn Jundab, thirteenth uh, is Abdullah ibn Umar, fourteenth is Abu Juhayim Ansari, fifteenth is Abu Bakra, and sixteenth is Suleiman ibn Surat. So these are the sixteen Sahaba who report, the, report marfu narratives or narratives directly. Uh, from the Prophet himself uh, and all these Sahaba uh, who report uh, these narratives uh, can be seen that the count comes to 16 although as I said earlier on we have reports in which uh, in excess of 16, the name is in excess of 16 but as far as I'm concerned I've done my best to research as far as I could and I could only gather the names of 16 Sahaba who report Marfu narratives. Uh, then uh, as far as the Mawkuf narratives are concerned in which the Sahabi directly uh, reports something from his own self, uh, th- there are seven in number. Uh, one is from Umar ibn al-Khattab, the second is from uh, Ibn Masood, and from him three students um, separately narrate this narrative. Then we have in the third place Ma'az ibn Jabal, in the fourth place Ali ibn Abi Talib, then we have Abdullah ibn Abbas in the fifth place, and sixthly we have Suleiman ibn Surat, and in seventh we have Abu Bakr al-Rizala. Anhum ajma'een. So all these uh, Sahaba, uh, they come out to s- in the seven in number who report this narrative. They do not report it from the Prophet, but uh, this narrative is, it's a mawkuf, uh, these are mawkuf narratives in which the Sahabi or a Sahabi narrates something from his own self. Uh, then we have nine maktu narratives. And as I said uh, earlier on, these uh, nine are also found in our Hadith books. We have Muhammad ibn Sirin. Then we have Abu Khilawa at number two. In uh, the third place, we have Amr ibn Dinar. Then we have uh, Suleiman ibn Mehran al-Armash in the fourth place. In the fifth place, we have Yahya ibn uh, Abi Usaid. Uh, in the sixth place, we have Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla. And from him, two students narrate, Mujahid ibn Jabr and Abu al-Hakam. Uh, in the seventh place, we have Qatada ibn Di'ama and then Abu Ubaidah. And in the ninth place, we have uh, Salama ibn Abi Salama. So these are the ninth, nine uh, people of the Tabi'un which also report this narrative. And you can see their names being displayed before you. And then we have uh, four people also uh, reporting narratives which actually explain the meaning of uh, the various interpretations or which actually are used by various scholars uh, to 
gauge the fact that this particular narrative is an interpretation of the seven Ahruf narrative. So we shall also critically view the chains of narration of those uh, four people who narrate this narrative. And amongst them, the first one is Ali ibn Abi Talib. Then we have Abdullah ibn Masood. And from him, four of his students uh, uh, narrate separate uh, narratives. And then we have Abu Talha. And then we have Zayd ibn Arqam, so, so all these four Sahaba actually report narratives which explain some of these seven Ahrub narratives. So this is just a summary of yours of what is going to be uh, discussed in the next uh, many sessions of this topic. Uh, the first uh, and foremost narrative yours that we're going to analyze is the famous Umar Hisham variant, which ha we have discussed in a number of uh, times in a number of places in the previous uh, talks and previous versions. Uh, I'm not going to read out the narrative before you know the translation because uh, we have done so a number of times. But what I'll do is uh, I'll present the critique on the chain of narration uh, of this narrative. Now, uh, in recent times, uh, this uh, particular narrative or this variant of the Seven Ahruf narrative has been criticized by uh, Shabir Ahmad Azhar Meriti in his uh, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari Ka Muta'ala, it's a book in Urdu. And he has actually uh, critiqued this narrative and he says uh, that the common thing in all these narratives is that uh, in all of them, Az Zuhri, Ibn Shahab Zuhri, he narrates from Urwa ibn Zubair. And he says that in the narrative in the Muatta of Imam Malik, which is perhaps is the earliest occurrence of this narrative, uh, Zuhri's uh, link with Urwa is in Anana. So uh, Zuhri is guilty of Tadlis in this particular narrative. Uh, and then he posits that in later books like the Al-Jami of Sahih of Imam Bukhari and that of uh, Imam Muslim, this Anana has been converted into a Hadasana or a Akhbarana uh, and therefore is uh, something which cannot be trusted. Because the earliest occurrence of the link between Urwa, uh, between, uh, in, in Urwa's uh, narration is that Zuhri, Zuhri's Anana exists. So, so therefore Zuhri has an Anana uh, from uh, Urwa ibn Zubair. Uh, this, is something, this is something viewers, uh, which is uh, extremely important to realize because uh, if uh, Zuhri's link with Urwa is an Anana, then the whole narrative is, uh, is rendered very suspect because this would mean that Zuhri's Tadlis has become very evident here. Now, let me go into more details vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis this, uh, this particular uh, concise information that I've just presented before you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to examine the thesis uh, which has been put forth by Shabir Ahmad Azhar Meriti because this is all that he has stated in his book. He has not gone into details. He has just said that the uh, that of Anana and the Matta of Imam Malik of Zuhri is a sufficient proof. But I'm going to make a more detailed review and evaluation of his claim so that we can see whether it can be trusted or not. Viewers, I have tried to gather uh, all the narratives, uh, all, all the variants of the Umar Hisham uh, narrative, and I have, uh, I have concluded that they have been reported by eight students of, uh, of Zuhri. So uh, Zuhri, who is the primary person here, who is the focal point here, is the focal person, the common link, if you wish to call him. He has, his, this narrative uh, has been reported from him by, by eight of his students, and among them are uh, Malik ibn Anas, then we have Ma'mur ibn Rashid, then we have Uqail ibn Khalid, then we have Shureb ibn Abi Hamza, uh, then we have Yunus ibn Yazid, then we have in the sixth place Ibn, ibn Akhi al Zuhri, in the seventh place we have Fuleh ibn Suleiman, and the, in the eighth place we have Abdul Rahim Ansari. So these are the eight students who transmit this narrative from, from uh, Imam Zuhri. And therefore, we are now going to analyze each of, these uh, each of these students, the way he transmits it, and what is the situation of the Anana in their particular narrations. So I'm going to start off with the first of these. Uh, and uh, they are basically, uh, in, 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 uh, we, ha we need to realize that in the, in the variance of all the students of Imam Malik, now we are going to take the first of these, uh, and it is Malik ibn Anas. So, uh, Malik ibn Anas is the foremost, uh, foremost student of uh, Zuhri in this regard. And uh, Malik ibn Anas reports the narrative. So in all the variants of the students of Malik ibn Anas who report this narrative from him, except one, there exists the Anana of Zuhri. And following are the details of these students. Uh, the first of them is Abdullah ibn Yusuf. And his narratives are, have been recorded by 
Bukhari, uh, for example, and uh, by, besides others. Then we have Yahya ibn Yahya. His narrative has been recorded by Muslim, besides others. Then we have al qarnabi and his narrative has been recorded by Abu Nuraim in his Al-Musnad, Al-Mustakhraj, Allah Sahih Muslim, besides other books as well. In the fourth place, we have Ahmad ibn Abi Bakr, and his narrative has been recorded by Ibn Habban in his Sahih. And uh, then we have, in, uh, in the fifth place, we have uh, Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, and his narrative has been recorded by Abu Ubaid in his Fazal al-Quran. And uh, I'm just naming one book or each, uh, otherwise uh, we have other people as well uh, who have recorded these narratives. This is just an example. Uh, in the sixth place, we have uh, Abdul Razak, and uh, this has been recorded by uh, Tirmidhi in his Sunan. Uh, in the seventh place, uh, we have uh, Abdul Rahman uh, Ibn Qasim, and his narrative, uh, narrative has been recorded by Al-Nasai in his Sunan al-Mushtaba, besides some of the other books. In the eighth place, now, uh, as you would recall, we are discussing the students of Imam Malik who report this narrative from him. In the eighth place, we have Imam Shafi. And his narrative has been recorded by uh, Bahqi in his Al Sunan al Kubra. Then in the tr uh, ninth place, we have Abdullah ibn Wahab uh, and recorded by Abu Awana in his uh, Musnad. In the tenth place, we have Usman ibn Umar and his narrative has been recorded by Abu Awana as well. Uh, in, then in the eleventh place, we have Abu Mus'ab and his narrative has been recorded by Al Baghwi in his uh, Hadith Mus'ab. And then in the twelfth place, we have Rah ibn uh, Ubada and his narrative has been uh, recorded by. Uh, at Tahabi in his uh, Shara Mushkul al Asar. Now we have two other uh, people as well who report this narrative as per Imam Dar Qutni, but I have not been able to find their variants. So I have just enlisted them, and they are the 13 and the 14th people respectively who report this narrative from Imam Malik. But as I said, both these narratives I was not able to locate in our Hadith corpus. The, the 13th of them is Javeria bint Asma, and the 14th is Maran. So these are the people, and in all probability, Maran is here, here is Maran ibn Isa. So the one exception in this regard is Karnavi's narrative from Malik recorded by Abul Fazl al-Razi. So uh, as you would recall, I had said that uh, only in this exception, the Anana does not exist, uh, whereas in all other narratives, uh, the, the, there is the Anana. So in this particular exception, in which Karnavi reports from Imam Malik, uh, we do not have the Anana of Zuhri. So this is as far as Imam Malik is concerned. Uh, I am now going on, going on to the next student of Zuhri, and he is Mamur ibn Rashid. Uh, Mamur ibn Rashid, uh, in all the variants of, the, of all the students of Imam Mamur ibn Rashid who report this narrative from him, there exists the Anana of Zuhri except in one case. And uh, let me now uh, first go into more details. Now, the, the students who report this uh, variant from, or these variants from Mamur ibn Rashid are Abdul Razak, his narrative is mentioned in Abu Nu'im's uh, al Mustad al Mustakhraj la Sahih Muslim. And the second one is Abdul Ala ibn Abdul Ala. And his narrative has been mentioned by uh, Al Nasai in Sunan al Mushtaba. The one exception in this regard is that Abdul Razak from Marmar, the first of these variants, uh, recorded by Abu Fazl al Razi. So this is, the, this, this is the exception in this regard. And uh, therefore, uh, this is, it is here that we find the Anana of Zori. Now let me go on to the third uh, person in this regard, the third student of Imam Malik, and he is Uqail ibn Khalid. The only student who reports from him is Lais ibn Sa'ad. From Lais, the following three students report. Uh, one of them is Saeed ibn Uqair, uh, and his narrative is found in Bukhari, al Jami al-Sahih. Then we have Yahya ibn Bukair, his narrative is found in, uh, also in Bukhari. And then we have Abdullah ibn Salih, uh, and his narrative is found in, in Abu Ubaid's Fazal al-Quran. So these are the three students who, uh, who uh, narrate from uh, Lais. And uh, uh, there exists an Anana of Zori in only in the narrative reported by Abdullah ibn Salih. So the rest is Haddasna Akhbarna, otherwise we have uh, this uh, present. So viewers, now we move on to the fourth student of, uh, uh, of Imam uh, Zuhri, and uh, he is Shoaib ibn Abi Hamza. So if, as far as Shoaib ibn Abi Hamza is concerned, five students report this narrative from Abul Yaman, the student of Shoaib. So from Abul Yaman, who is a student of Shoaib, five people report it. First of them is Abu Ubaid, and uh, this has been uh, recorded by in his own book, Fadal al-Quran. The second is uh, Abu Zura, and his uh, narrative has been recorded by Tabarani in his Musnud al-Shamiheen. 
Then we have Bukhari, Imam Bukhari himself, and it has been recorded by uh, in, his, in his own book, Al Jami Sahih. In the fourth place, we have Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and uh, he, this has been recorded by in his own Muslim. And then in the seventh, in the fifth place, we have Ibrahim ibn Al Hussein, and this has been recorded by Al Bahqi in his Shahab al Iman. Among the above uh, above students, only the first two report the Anana of Zuhri. So the first two would be Abu Ubaid and Abu Zura. They report the Anana of Imam Zuhri, and the rest do not. Let's now move on to the fifth student of Imam Zuhri, and he is Yunus ibn Yazid. And from Yunus ibn Yazid, we find two students reporting. One is Lais ibn Sa'ad, and the other one is Ibn Wahab. As far as Lais's uh, narrative is concerned, you can find it in Imam Bukhari's al Jami Sahih. And as far as Ibn Wahab is concerned, you can find his narrative in the al Jami Sahih of Imam Muslim. Now, in all these variants, none of the students of Ibn Wahab report the Anana of Azuri. None of them. However, in the case of Lais, this is not the case. Abdullah bin Saleh reports from Lais, and this variant has the Anana of Zuhri. So this is one exception. Now we move on to the sixth student of Imam Zuhri, and he is Ibn Akhi al Zuhri. So the variant reported by Ibn Akhi al Zuhri does not contain the Anana of Imam Zuhri. This is, uh, this is a conclusion that I can clearly see when I study the variants, and this particular variant has been recorded by uh, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal in his Musnad. As far as the seventh person is concerned in this regard, uh, the seventh student of Imam Zuhri, he is Fuleh ibn Sulaiman, and two students report this narrative from him. Now, these two students are Yunus ibn Muhammad, who his narrative is found in the Muslims of Abu Awana, and then we have in the second place Abu Dawud al Tayalsi, and his narrative is found in his own book, the Muslims of al Tayalsi. Now, in the variant reported by Yunus ibn Muhammad, there exists the Anana of Zuhri. In the variant of Abu Dawud al Tayalsi reported by Yunus ibn Habib, there exists the Anana of Zori in the Musnad of Abu Awana. But, it is not, uh, but this is not the same in the case of the variant recorded by, uh, by the Musnad of Abu Dawud al Tayalsi. So, we have this discrepancy as well. Now, as far as the eighth and final student of Imam Zori is concerned, uh, we have Abdul Rahman Ansari, and his narrative has been uh, recorded by Ad Duri in his Al Juz Fihi Qirat al Nabi and also in the Shara Mushkil al-Asar of Tahavi. And this contains the Anana of Imam Zuhri. So viewer, this is a, just a summary of the variants uh, in which eight students of Imam Zuhri are reporting this narrative from their teacher. And then from, from the, them onwards, we have their own students as well. And uh, if you recall, we are analyzing the fact that which are the narratives in which there is the Anana of Zuhri or we are trying to establish or find out whether Shabir Ahmed Azhar Merati's uh, premise that this has the Anana of Zuhri is established or not. Now, after this brief summary, uh, I would like you to see or like you to consider the fact what uh, Imam Ibn Hajar has written in his Tehzeeb al Tehzeeb regarding the students of Imam Zuhri. So, it's, uh, it is said that Qala ad Duri and Ibn Ma'in. Asbatun nas fi zuhri malik wa ma'amar summa adda jama'a. This means Ad-Duri reports on the authority of Yahya ibn Ma'in that Malik and Ma'amar are the most trustworthy of Az-Zuhri's pupils and then he counted the rest. So viewers, in the light of this passage which you have uh, seen is by Hafiz ibn Hajar in his Tehzeeb uh, al he according to him, uh, the, the people or the students of Imam Zuhri who are much more reliable then the others are Malik and Marmar. So I'm now going to concentrate on the narratives which have been reported by Malik and Marmar from Imam Zori. Earlier on, if you recall, let us first take the case of uh, Imam Malik himself. As far as Malik is concerned, uh, we had seen that all the narratives which have been reported uh, from Malik uh, and he reports from Zori, they contain the Anana of Zori, except for one, and the, that exception uh, was the one which, had, which is recorded by Abul Fazl Razi in his Ma'ani al Harfu Sarba. So you can see its chain of narration being displayed before you. Now, this particular uh, narrative says that there is, it does not contain the Arana of Imam Zuhri. But then this is rendered ineffective if we look, the, uh, look up at the narrative of Imam Malik in his own Mu'atta. As you can see in parallel, his chain of narration is also being displayed before you. And here you can clearly see that the Anana of Zori exists. So if you compare the two chains, in both chains, Malik is reporting from Zori, 
But in the case of his own book, Muatta, and Muatta, as you know, precedes Abu al-Fadl Razi's Al-Araf al-Sabra, Mani al-Araf al-Sabra. So therefore, we'll give preference to what Muatta has reported. Muatta does not report, uh, it, it does report the uh, Anana of Zuhri. However, uh, in the case of Al-Fazl al-Razi, his particular book does not uh, report the Anana of Zuhri. But since Muatta precedes Abu al-Fazl al-Razi's books, we shall uh, rely on it. And therefore, this exception, viewers, uh, as a result, would be rendered ineffective in my humble view. Next, viewers, let's uh, move on to the uh, case of Mamar ibn Rashid. Now, uh, all the, the variants which have been reported uh, by Mamar ibn Rashid, as you recall, I had earlier on said that one of in one of them we find that uh, the Anana of Zuhri does not exist, and one of them it does exist. As far as the one in which the Anana does not exist, again it is the same book, and the book is uh, Abul Fazl Razi's uh, Maani al Arfu Sabra. Here you can see the chain of narration being reported, uh, before, uh, being displayed before you, and here you can clearly see that the Zuhri of uh, the Anana of Zuhri does not exist. But then a previous work. A prior work is that of Abdul Razak's Musannaf. And here you can see, in, in this case, Abdul Razak is reporting from Mamar, and Mamar is reporting from Zuhri. And here you can spot clearly the Anana of Zuhri. So Abdul Razak's Musannaf, which actually precedes Abul Fazl Razi's book, and in this case also, we find both we find Mamar reporting. But since Abdul Razak's Musannaf is a book which precedes uh, the book of Abul Fazl Razi, and this earlier book, uh, does contain the Anana of Imam Zuhri, so, so therefore we are uh, inclined, or I am inclined to rely on this report. So this would mean that this particular exception is also rendered as ineffective, which in other words would mean that all the variants which have been reported by Imam, uh, Imam Malik and all the variants which have been reported by Marmar, they effectively contain the Anana of Zuhri, and hence it can be safely be established that the contention of uh, Shabir Ahmed al uh, Azhar al Mirati, uh, who said that the Anana of Zori is established, I would go along by him and uh, I would corroborate his conclusion because, in my opinion, the variants which actually report this narrative, the two stronger personality, personalities in this regard are Malik and Mamar. And my analysis before you has just shown that these two personalities, the variants of these two personalities, they contain the Anana of Zori effectively. And furthermore, viewers, we've also seen some of the other students besides these two uh, and the variants uh, which uh, exist uh, in the, in the bit between them, they also contain the Anana of Zori. So relying primarily on this evidence that Mamar and Malik's narratives effectively contain the Anana of Zori and some of the other students also have this uh, Anana, I would say that Shabir Ahmad Azhar's Merati's uh, uh, conclusion or his own deduction that uh, the Anana of Zori is there and therefore the Tadlis is established here, I would corroborate it and hence I would say that this narrative has the Tadlis uh, of Zohri. Zohri is guilty of Tadlis in this narrative, his Anana is effectively present and hence this narrative cannot be depended upon as far as its chain of narration is concerned. Uh, viewers, so this was as far as the Umar Hisham variant is concerned. Uh, I will end this session uh, by discussing the next person uh, in line who is Usman ibn Affan and uh, then the later uh, narrators uh, inshallah we shall look up in the later talks. Uh, now as far as uh, Usman ibn Affan's narrative is concerned it is being displayed before you and since it ha we have not discussed this I will also um, uh, just read out the narrative before you. And uh, this narrative has been recorded by Al-Haris ibn Abi Usama in his Musnad and uh, the words here are حدثنا عوف قال بلغني عن عثمان قال قال على المنبر أذكر الله رجلا سمع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن القرآن أنزل على سبعة أحرف كلهن شاف كاف إلا قام فقاموا حتى لم يحسوا فشاهدوا بذلك ثم قال عثمان وأنا أشهد معكم لأنا سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ذلك so Auf said that it has reached him that Usman once said on the pulpit, I give the reference of God to any person who has heard the Prophet say that the Quran has been revealed on seven Ahruf. Each of them is enough and sufficient to stand up. So anyone who has heard this, he should stand up. So many people then stood up 
that they could not be counted. So many people stood up. So uh, the words are actually, so many people then stood up that they could not be counted. They bore witness to their statement of the Prophet. So Usman said, I also bear witness with you because I also heard the Messenger of God say this. So viewers, the chain of narration of this narrative is being displayed before you. And there is an obvious critique on this narrative and that is that uh, yeah, as you can see that there are two chains uh, which, are, which, from, uh, which uh, this narrative has been reported from Usman. One of them is Sayyar ibn Salama and the other one is of Ibn Abi Jamila. Now Sayyar, Sayyar died in 129 Hijra and of Ibn Abi Jamila died in 147 Hijra and we know that Usman died in 36 Hijra. So though, therefore it is an absolutely a clear uh, cut proof of the fact that the two could not have met. And neither Sayyar could have met Usman nor of Ibn Abi Jamila who could have uh, met uh, Usman because uh, uh, there is uh, this difference which separates them. Hence, all narratives in which these two people report anything from Usman, they are munkata, they are broken and they cannot be relied upon. So this second narrative, the critique is rather simple that because of the inkata, because of the fact that they are not mutasil, because of the fact that both Sayyar ibn Salama and Awf ibn Abi Jamila uh, could not have reported events which, are, which took place in the times of, uh, or which could not, who could not have heard from Usman, therefore uh, such narratives cannot be regarded as reliable. So viewers, I will end my critique of uh, uh, these two narratives here and inshallah in the future talks I shall take up the rest of the narrators from among the Sahaba, uh, from the Murfu narratives first, and then the Mawkuf ones, and then the Maktu ones. And finally, uh, we shall also critically analyze narratives uh, which alleged to have described, which are alleged to have described the explanation of the seven Ahruf. Akulu kawli haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisaar al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat.